Hello guys, this is Dr. Jojo Kotur, restricted dentist and endodontist from India. Today we will be learning about oxygen inhibitor layer and its significance in clinical dentistry. First, let's discuss very briefly about the polymerization process. Polymer actually means many monomers. You have multiple monomers combined together and that's how a polymer is formed. And majority of the dental composites, light curable re composite resins used in dentistry uses BIS-GMA as a monomer. Other than BIS-GMA, modern composites have BIS-EMA, TEC-DMA, UDMA and many more. So what happens when you light cure a dental composite? Light actually act as the activator and the composite resin have something called initiators which most commonly used initiators are camphroquinone or tertiary amine. Now these initiators will produce free radical. The free radical reacts with the monomer that is a methacylate which have double bond and it actually opens up the double bond and reacts with the methacylate. And this methacylate containing free radical reacts with another methacylate. And this process continues and you have a polymer with a free radical. Now finally what happens is the last free radical of a polymer react with last free radical of another polymer and that's how the termination happens and clinically you get the set the clinical set of composite happens when termination happens so to summarize the previous slide i can say free radical is necessary to complete the polymerization process now look at this sentence that is the free radical have greater affinity to oxygen than towards the methacylate carbon-carbon double bond. What do you mean by that? That is, oxygen is a good free radical scavenger. That means, when the free radical comes in contact with the oxygen, it reacts with the oxygen rather than reacting with the methacylate group of the monomer. So what is its clinical significance? You have a class 1 cavity and you placed the first layer of composite and then you cure it in the presence of oxygen. So you know on the top portion you will get the oxygen inhibitor layer. How that layer is formed? It is because the topmost layer of the composite is in contact with the oxygen when the initiation, propagation and termination process of polymerization happen and this top layer free radical will react with the oxygen rather than reacting with the methacylate and this topmost layer and studies have shown that the thickness will be around 10 micrometer and this particular layer, we call it as the oxygen inhibitor layer. Now, does oxygen inhibitor layer is good or bad? Definitely it is good in the for, for the first layer. You know why? Because it helps in the bonding of the first layer to the second layer. Now, you may be wondering how that is happening. It happens because the oxygen inhibitor layer have lot of carbon-carbon double bonds. You know why? Because the methacylate is not reacted with the free radical. This reaction is inhibited by the oxygen. So when you place the second layer and cure it, you get covalent bond with the overlying composite and together we can call it again as copolymerization of the first layer and the second layer and both will act as a single
homogeneous composite. From the previous slides, you understood that oxygen inhibitor layer is an uncured layer. That means it hadn't undergone polymerization. So definitely it is sticky and it is soft. Now, what is the disadvantage of that particular layer? The disadvantage happens when you place the final layer. Now, you have the first and second layer here and you place the final layer and you cured it. So when you cure it, again oxygen is there which inhibits the polymerization of the topmost 10 micrometer and you will get the oxygen inhibitor layer on the top. Now this is really important for anterior restorations because this is sticky, it is soft and it is uncured. So there is high chance that these layer will absorb the stains and will end up in discoloration. So the question is, how to minimize or prevent the formation of oxygen inhibitor layer? There are three ways to do that. Number one, cure through a biofit matrix or a mylar strip, wherein these matrix will prevent the contact of oxygen to composite. The second way is to cure through a glycerin gel. Once you have sculpted the composite, you place the glycerin on top of it and then you cure it, wherein glycerin will act as a barrier and prevent the scavenging of free radical by the oxygen. The third and the final method is you finish and polish the surface. You know oxygen inhibitor layer is around 10 micrometer in thickness. When you finish and polish, you are removing more than that. So obviously you remove the oxygen inhibitor layer. Now let's discuss the clinical significance of oxygen inhibitor layer in clinical dentistry. Number one, it discolors the composite resin over time. You know the reason. The uncured, shiny, soft, topmost layer is the oxygen inhibitor layer. Now this composite I cured without applying the glycerin. So you can see the shiny appearance there. Now if I hadn't removed this topmost layer in the form of finishing and polishing, definitely this patient will report back with a discoloration because this oxygen inhibitor layer will absorb the stain and colorants from the oral environment. So to prevent it or remove it, you have two options. If you are cured without a glycerin, you better finish it. Now, if you had cured through the glycerin, probably you can uh, avoid the finishing if provided if you are happy with the contour, contacts, texture, everything. The second clinical significance comes with the bonding agent. This oxygen inhibit layer actually is formed when you cure the bonding agent. So you can see here, apply the bonding agent to the gingival seat of a class two restoration. And when I cure it, the same thing is gonna happen on the topmost part of the bonding agent. Now what's the clinical significance? Now if you're not working under rubidam isolation, imagine after curing the, comp the bonding agent, the area become contaminated. So what happens? The topmost layer will have salivary proteins and many more things. And this can affect the bonding of the composite to the bonding agent. And it will reduce the bond strength of the composite to the bonding agent. The third is staining of margin. So this is uh, more applicable in indirect restorations wherein we use a light cure or a dual cure or resin cement to bond the indirect to the tooth. Here is an example. This is an indirect restoration uh, just uh, came from the lab. You can appreciate the margin here and this is uh, after the bonding protocol. Now before light curing it 
you know this is a margin even though it's not appreciated well here because of the excellent color match this is where the margins are present and it is important that you place glycerin gel over this margin and then you give the cure because that will help to prevent oxygen inhibit layer here and can avoid potential discoloration of the margin over a long period of time. The fourth is when we fabricate direct provisional restorations in the form of temporary crowns. Now consider this example. Both these crowns have to be replaced. So I had removed those crowns and I had done a good post-endodontic filling under rubber dam isolation. And it is very important that either I prevent the formation of oxygen inhibitor layer or I should remove it in the form of polishing before I place the pro temp or similar product for direct temporaries. You know why? Because if I hadn't eliminated or removed or avoided the formation of oxygen inhibitor layer, there is high chance the temporary will bond with these restoration and later it will be really difficult for me to remove the temporary crowns. The second comes for the topmost layer of the temporary crowns. You know composite resin when it get cured with light or via chemical cure, the topmost layer react with the oxygen. Something similar can happen on the topmost layer of a chemical cure temporary crowns also. So what manufacturer recommend is you wipe the topmost layers with alcohol so that to some extent you can remove the oxygen inhibitor layer of the temporary crowns. If you hadn't done that, there is high chance of discoloration of the temporaries, especially if the patient have some sort of uh, uh, colored food or if they had uh, turmeric and all those things. The last clinical significance of oxygen in bitter layer is while doing impression, especially putty impression. You know, it also is a polymerization. Now, if you hadn't removed this oxygen in bitter layer, there is high chance there is insufficient polymerization of the impression. And when you try to remove the impression after four or five minutes, you will see that little bit of the impression will be adhering to the tooth which are unset. So in order to avoid that, you better uh, cure uh, the restoration through a glycerin or probably you can polish it before you take the putty impression on the same day. So these are the five important clinical significance of oxygen inhibitor layer. Finally, I would like to thank all uh, for the motivation given uh, for my previous uh, YouTube presentation and I would like all of you to continue to do so and uh, I'll be uploading a few more in the coming days. Now if you have any queries uh, regarding the topic which I had discussed uh, in this presentation or uh, in the previous one, you can always contact me in any of these modules. Thank you all. Bye.